Lord this evening. Man, you made it. Rain or shine, you made it today. Amen? Amen. But with that being said, I just want to start off by thanking Jesus, our Lord and Savior, because without his, without his courage, I wouldn't be able to stand here before you this evening. As I look into the crowd, I see mighty men and women of God. The army that God is raising up here in North Hollywood, do you believe that? You are a mighty army here in North Hollywood that God is raising up. Look around you. You have pastors, evangelists, home directors, missionaries, pastors' wives. Amen? And that's, that's, all, that's all God's doing. That's all he's raising to, to replace them. And I thank him for that day of rest. I also want to thank pa- uh, Pastor Sonny and Sister Judy Arguzoni, our founders, for their commitment, for their giving themselves to him to save those. This third wave generation, not once, not twice, but three times, amen? I also want to thank our pastors here, Pastor Ray and Sister Crystal, for their commitment to the church, for them answering the call to plant a church here in North Hollywood, amen? I also want to thank my home director, uh, Brother Junior and Sister Darlene, for their commitment, for them answering the call and starting a home right here in North Hollywood, amen? I also want to thank the gang team. I want to thank the gang team because, man, without them, I probably wouldn't be able to do half of the stuff that we do, amen? But it's only through their help that we're able to achieve it. But with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start a teaching. I haven't even opened the Bible yet. All right. So, uh, all right. So if you could turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22. And you want to know something funny about, um, well, not funny, but this is God working in my life. So I had a scripture, I already, I already had a message, a foundation for a message. And you know me, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the game, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking okay, I'm going to preach about getting the lights down, answering the call, the vision, this and that. So, you know, I, in, in this morning, I, I got into prayer. And for some reason, I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't get that breakthrough that I was looking for. I couldn't get that connection. And then I felt God speak to me, and he said, you know what, that's good and everything, but that's not what I want you to speak on this evening. He said, you're going to speak on what I want you to speak on, amen? And how many of us know that I was obedient to God this, this morning? So what it is, is it's uh, Hebrews verses 10, chapter 10, verses 22. And with that, I'll go ahead and read. Let us go right into the presence of God. Someone say, right into the presence. Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with the blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Amen? And with that, I'll go ahead and pray this morning. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I come to you this evening, God. Lord God, and I'm grateful. I'm thankful for who you are in my life, God. Father God, I pray that you would inspire me this evening, God. Father God, I know that this is a word from you, God. I pray that you allow me to transmit it with the clarity and the boldness. Holy Spirit, this is your stage. And in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. See, so I want to give a background on chapter 10 before, before I, I get into this, this scripture. It actually, it's an introduction. It wasn't the main scripture that God had given me. God had given me Hebrews 11, 1. But I couldn't, I couldn't really, I wanted to give you an overall vision of what I was speaking on, Amen. So the background for Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1, we, it says this. It says, the old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow. Was only a shadow. A dim preview of good things to come. Not the good things themselves. You see, it was just a dim shadow. A portion of the good things that were to come. Amen? And how many of us know that we have... In a, almost, a, I don't like to say an advantage, but a little bit of an advantage uh, on our brothers and sisters of Old Testament days. You know, back then, they didn't have someone who came down from heaven and was sacrificed on the cross for our sins, amen? They didn't have Jesus Christ of Nazareth to die for them, not yet, but what it was is they had a system. Someone say a system. They had a system, and year after year, they would sacrifice bulls and goats. Year after year, they would sacrifice bulls and goats. Bulls and goats a, a, as a way to cover their sins. And, and they would do this year after year. Year after the year, they would go and they would sacrifice these, sacrifice these bulls. 
they would sacrifice these goats. Amen? But what, what was profound to me was this. It says in the Bible that year after year they would sacrifice these bulls and these, and these goats, but they were nev- never able to provide perfect cleansing. They were never able to provide that perfect cleansing. Amen. That cleansing that you get when you get into prayer. That cleansing you get when you begin to give your life to God each and every morning. That cleansing you get when you seek out his presence. Are you with me this evening? That presence you get when you begin to seek him out in prayer. When you get to begin to seek him out in fasting. And when you begin to read his word. That perfect cleansing this evening. And you see, what, what caught my attention was they would sacrifice these bulls over and over all, all year long, year after year. And the Bible says that it actually reminded them of their sins. It reminded them of the sins that they had committed. And it's in the same chapter. It says that they reminded them of the sins that they committed. It wasn't fully able to wash them clean this evening. Amen. And in Hebrews 10, 12, as I begin to read that, it says this. But our high priest offered himself to to God as a single sacrifice for sins good for all time. Amen. You see, Jesus came down from heaven. He looked down on the earth and he's seen the trials. He's seen the tribulations. He's seen the struggles that we were going through. He's seen that we were still had that guilty conscience. Has, has anybody ever had a guilty conscience in here? Has anybody felt like, man, I got this blood on my hands and I can't wash it clean this evening. I can't wash it clean. No matter how many times I wash my hands, I can't wash it clean. But I'm here to tell you that God has came, sent his only son by the name of Jesus Christ. He was crucified on that cross for the atonement of your sins this evening. He died for us. Amen. He died so that way our shame and our guilt and our condemnation could be wiped clean. That doesn't mean that the enemy is not going to come and say, you remember this time? You remember that time? Remember when this happened or when that happened? Or bring up old memories or maybe bring up an old person in your life to remind you of your past? But how many of us know that our God is greater? How many of us know that our God is greater than any circumstance? Than any trial, any tribulation that we may be facing at this moment? And he gave us a direct Line to the Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. He ripped, he, the, the, when Jesus was crucified and we died, the veil was ripped open. It was teared down the middle. That means we have direct access to our Father in heaven. Amen. How many of us are grateful that God is, Jesus is interceding at the right hand of God? Amen. Interceding for us. For us. And you see, I, I realized something. I was, I was thinking to myself right now while I was standing there, I was, I was thinking this. I was like, man, I was ready to come up here and preach on the vision, preach on, preach on answering the call and this and that, going to different nations, different countries. But none of that would be possible without a relationship with God. None of that would be possible without a foundation in Christ. I'm talking about a pure faith, a clean faith. The type of faith where you wake up in the morning and you get into prayer. The type of faith where you get in, wake up in the morning and you read your Bible. The type of faith where you're able to walk in God's righteousness. Maybe I'm talking about being spirit-led each and every day of your life. That confidence, that pure faith, that clean faith that comes along with following Jesus Christ in Nazareth. Has anybody experienced that this evening? That pure faith. That allows you to walk in boldness. That pure faith that gives you a confidence. Amen? Amen. And how do you achieve that clean, pure faith? And I want to refer to Hebrews 10.22. And it goes as follows. Let us go right into the presence of God. Let us go right into the presence of God. How do you do that? Prayer. Fasting. Fasting. Reading your Bible each and every morning. We have, to, we have to remember that we must have a spiritual discipline. A spiritual discipline to take us to that next level. I know Pastor Ray said it that 
the, the prayer that got us by on this last season is not going to get us by on this season. I'm here to tell you, you got to recommit yourself each and every morning, even when you don't want to do it. We're talking at, at Pastor's House, man. We're going to have to go men's home status and right there in Pastor's House, prayer every morning, devotion every morning, getting into the word. Amen? Really digging in our foundation to have a pure relationship with God. And then we can take the nations, amen? And then we can answer the call. And that's when you receive your vision. That's when you receive your direction. Amen? Amen. So what I want to do is I want to, I want to, that brings me into my next point. Well, the title of my message, clean faith and the confidence in Christ. And uh, I'll go ahead and read the scripture, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Well, before I read that, I want to give you a, a background on the book of Hebrews. So... Paul the Apostle was thought to be the author of the book of Hebrews, right? Although, among modern scholars, the author is debatedly unknown. But if you ask me, I feel like the, the background, the way that the author is speaking, it speaks to me like the Apostle Paul, amen? So the intro, the intro to chapter 11, you see great examples of faith all throughout this chapter. It says great examples of faith. Great, great examples of faith like Enoch who was taken up to heaven without dying. Or Noah, who built a large boat to save his family from the flood that wiped out the whole earth. Wiped out the whole earth. Or Abraham, who answered the call of God and left his home to go to an, another as his inheritance. You see, these are great examples of faith. Men who have faith in God. Men who had a relationship with God, amen? A relationship, a foundation in Christ where they're able to, to have a direct contact with him. I want to say more relation with him. Where they're able to hear his voice. Are you able to hear God's voice this evening? To receive your, your direction. Amen? So Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is the confidence. Somebody say Confidence. Faith is a confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. And I want to, I want to give you the definition of confidence this evening. This is the Webster's Dictionary of Confidence. The quality or state of being certain. See, faith is the quality or the state of being certain that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us an assurance about things that we cannot see. Amen? And another example, another definition is a relationship of trust or intimacy. A relationship of trust or intimacy this evening. And in this church, I want to let you know that we have big faith. That we have big faith in this church that one day will be a base church. Amen? That one day will be a model. An example for the rest of the San Fernando Valley. Are you with me this evening? Do you believe that North Hollywood is a base church? But you know what that takes? That takes base faith. Big faith. Mega faith. Like Jabez when he asked God to make a mega. Amen. Come on, somebody. See, a relationship or trust, a relationship of trust or intimacy we have to trust that God will get us there. But we need to do our part, a relationship with God, an intimacy with God, seeking him, and having that clean faith. Did, you, did I explain that good this evening, that clean faith, yeah. that bold faith, that, that faith, that assurance being spirit-led? See, and the confidence that what you hope for will actually happen. Like, for, okay, for example, for me and my ministry, I have faith that we're going to send students to the Urban Training Center. I have faith that we're going to raise the finances for the buses for winter retreat. I have faith when we came back, that God, when we went to winter retreat, that God was going to speak to us on that mountain. Did God speak to anybody on that mountaintop? Amen. And this, uh, this is not a long message, and as the worship team makes their way up, We have, the faith to, we have the faith to see your sons and daughters will see the world. 
places like Brazil, Australia, Panama, Amsterdam, London, and Africa. The faith to know that generational curses in our lives will be broken. The faith to know that God is here in this place and he's working on each and every one of us individually. How many of you are thankful that we have a personal God? How many of you are thankful that God knows your name? Amen? But this begins in having a disciplined communication with God. Are you catching what I'm, catching what I'm saying this evening? Amen. God wants to take us to a new level. God wants to take us to a new level in our confidence with him. We just have to be open and willing. Are you open and willing this evening to be taken to another level? Do you say, you know what, God, here I am, use me. You know, here I am, God, send me, I'll go. Or maybe even here in this church. I believe God is tugging on some of your hearts this evening saying, you know what, son, daughter, I want you to step into ministry. I want you to start getting around the leaders. I want you to start to be of service, amen? I know that some of us are stepping into new areas of ministry. Life group leaders. Media. The worship team. And the gang team. Amen? A new level of faith. A new level of prayer. A new le level of reading his word. And having confidence in him through walking in the spirit. And if you can all stand with me this evening. I'll read that for you one more time. Faith is the confidence of what we hope for will actually happen. And it gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. And I'm here to tell you that North Hollywood will have a good reputation. Amen. And as the worship team go ahead and minister to music, prepare your hearts now to receive a word from God. Amen. <laughs> 